Hi, let's talk about single replacement reactions and how to read activity series. Now, in order to understand the activity series, we need to backtrack just a second and look at single replacement reactions. What is a single replacement reaction? Uh, well, here's the easy answer for you. You have a single element. So this is going to be a solid metal. Um, it could also be a non-metal. In this situation though, I have my single metal um, with a compound and what happens is the metals switch places. Watch where these metals go. I have copper by itself, silver attached to this compound, the nitrate, and those are going to switch places. So now the silver is by itself and the copper is on the compound. The copper is on the compound. Uh, so that's your single replacement reaction. Now, how do we know um, to predict products how do I know that that reaction will happen, that I'll actually get those products? Well, that comes from the activity series. And let me show you this. Uh, so you can Google activity series. Um, here's the trick. This says ease of oxidation increases. That means that um, this lithium is going to be the most active. And I'm going to put in parentheses the strongest. That's what I want you to think in your head, that it's going to be the most active is the strongest. Um, likewise, down below, these are going to be the least active. So likewise, be thinking the weakest. Now let's find our copper and our silver. So let's see, copper is right here. Ooh, there it is. There's copper and here is silver. Okay, here's your really big takeaway. The more active it is, the greater ability to replace another element. Um, so this copper is higher than the silver, it's more active. That means that the copper has the ability to kick that silver off, replace it, and go on to uh, the compound. So I tell my students, um, pretend like they're alive, we're going to personify this for just a minute, that both of those metals want to be in the compound, okay? They want the, the companionship of being in a compound. Pretend with me. Um, and so the stronger one is the one that wins. The one that is more active is the one ultimately that will sit and be in that compound. Okay, so I know that's juvenile, but sometimes it helps my students think through this. Chemistry-wise, it is whichever element is more active has the ability to replace the other metal and it will be in the compound. So let's practice with this. We're going to do two, two examples. And I do want to remind you, you could do this with um, halogens as well. You could do it with non-metals. You would just need a different table. Um, rather than saying metal, you would need non-metals and you'd be looking for ease of oxidation, the most active. And you do the same, same principle, whichever non-metals higher, it will replace the other non-metal and end up being in the compound. So same principle, we're just going to focus on metals. Okay, so let's take two reactants. I would like to do an iron and a copper sulfate. So we'll have iron plus, and this is solid, copper sulfate, and that will be aqueous. And I'm wondering, what are the products going to be? Sorry, that was a little squishy there. What we do is we look at the activity series and compare which one is more active. So we need copper. There's my copper down here. And the iron, you'll probably see it before I see it. There it is. Here's our iron. So which one's stronger? Which one's more active? The iron is, which means the iron has the ability to kick that copper off. So we are going to switch places with those two metals. The copper, because it's less active, is going to be by itself. This will be the solid plus, and now we're going to have the iron be with that sulfate. Um, we really should have been told what the charge would be on the iron because it can have multiple oxidation numbers. If you're not told, the most common oxidation number is going to be two plus. So assume it's a two since we weren't told. Now, in order to write this compound, always go to the ions. Ionic compounds go to the ions cross down charges. So I will have Fe2 plus, and then the sulfate is a minus two. Cross down those charges, you would get a two and a two, and only on ionic compounds we can reduce. So let's go ahead and reduce, and you end up with an Fe, uh, an iron two sulfate, which will now be 
aqueous, which will now be aqueous. So one more time, let's go over that. I looked at my two metals on the activity series. The iron was more active, stronger. So it has the ability to kick the copper off, so the copper is by itself, and then the iron attaches to the sulfate to be a compound in that aqueous solution. Um, and the way you get that is you're going to write down um, charges to make sure you get the right subscripts. Um, if you need help with this, look um, on my playlist under naming, and that will help you in, in writing, writing ionic compounds. Last thing I always do is I make sure it's balanced. One iron, one iron, one copper, one copper, one sulfate, one sulfate, we're good to go. Okay, so that's example number one. Let's do another example. We are going to take a magnesium metal, magnesium solid plus an aluminum chloride aqueous. And we want to predict the products. All right, so let's find our magnesium and aluminum. Okay, there's aluminum. Oh, and magnesium's right by it. Okay, magnesium and aluminum. So the magnesium is above the aluminum. Nice. So it's stronger, it's more active which means that magnesium can kick the aluminum off. So we are going to have aluminum by itself, that will be solid, solid, plus, okay, the magnesium is going to go to the chlorine, so let's go to ions. I'll have Mg2+, plus, and the chloride is a minus one, let's cross down charges, we end up with MgCl2, and that will be aqueous. Last thing I do is I balance. So, oh look, we have three chlorines and two chlorines. So I'm going to put a, a three in front of the magnesium chloride, a two in front of the aluminum chloride. I have six chlorines, six chlorines, which means I need to put three for magnesium, three for magnesium, two aluminum, two aluminum. So now we have a balanced, um, now we have our balanced uh, single replacement reaction. Now, you might be saying, well, what if it's just opposite? What if the metal that's by itself is less, is less active, is not as strong? Let's take this and I'll show you a situation where we would fall into that scenario. Let's pretend this time that we have the aluminum. And I'm going to mix that with the magnesium chloride. Okay, and I want to predict products. So I find my magnesium and my aluminum. And I go, oh wait, aluminum is less active. It's not as strong. The aluminum does not have the ability to kick off that magnesium. You may love this. Easiest reaction ever. You write NR. Easiest reaction because it's not. It won't react. That is no reaction. So another really good takeaway that you can put in your pocket, have in your tool belt, if the element by itself is less active, is lower than the metal on the activity series, the metal that's in the compound, big fat nothing, no reaction. Because it's not strong enough to kick off that metal, it's a no reaction, no single replacement reaction at all. Okay, nice. Um, if you need to Google this, Google um, activity series. I'll, I'll, um, there's a lot of images that you could download. Okay, have a good day. Thanks.